Congratulations, Internet, we finally did it! Ash Williams, aka Bruce Campbell, is finally back in the Evil Dead universe with the aptly named 10-part series, Ash vs. Evil Dead. And as fun as it is to see our favorite B-listers square off against the Deadites on the hit show, we're still left aching over the grooviness that could have been a little rejected film by the name of Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. Hey guys, welcome to Rejected Movie Ideas, where we're fine with a buttload of horror sequels and crossovers, as long as we don't have to sit through another unwanted reboot. Such is the case of today's episode, where we look back at the much-anticipated, but alas unmade, horror fanboy wet dream that would have been Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash. Now, in case you don't remember, 2003 saw the release of the supernatural monster slugfest that was Freddy vs. Jason, a box office hit that speaks volumes about the great things that can be accomplished when movie executives, intellectual property lawyers, and filmmakers all work together. After making over $100 million at the global box office, New Line Cinema was eager to start working on a sequel. And in a seldom seen moment of self-awareness, studio execs realized that in order to have a successful follow-up, they couldn't just slap a number two after the title and hope for the best. They had to up the ante and bring in another horror icon who could hold his own in a fight against either Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees. After discarding Hellraiser's Pinhead, as well as Halloween's Michael Myers, the people at New Line Cinema found their contender in the form of Evil Dead's Ashley Williams. Only problem was, Ash wasn't New Line Cinema's property to begin with. But that didn't stop the studio from wasting a writer's time and asking him to draft a treatment for a possible Freddy-Jason-Ash crossover that would take place after the events of the aforementioned Freddy vs. Jason. Said treatment featured the opening of Crystal Lake's very first S-Mart, where Ash had come to pull double duty, both as a stock boy and as the chosen one, looking for the Necronomicon Ex Mortis, which was rumored to be inside the old Voorhees home. However, Ash wasn't the only one looking for the ancient Book of the Dead. Since the events of Freddy vs. Jason, a version of everyone's favorite dream stalker had survived deep inside Jason's subconscious, and was pushing the lumbering oath to retrieve the book and use its powers to resurrect the vengeful nightmare demon. Freddy eventually gets what he wants and, like a hellish genie, pops out of Jason's subconscious and into the real world, ready to wreak havoc on the small town. From that point on, it's a horror free-for-all, with heavyweights Freddy and Jason in one corner and dim-witted Ash in the other, fighting for the souls of the even more dim-witted teenagers of Crystal Lake. So with a convoluted premise ready and New Line Cinema eager to milk their franchises as much as they could, why didn't this ever get made? Well, you have to remember that all this was happening at the same time Sam Raimi's Spider-Man franchise was breaking box office records, and Raimi, who holds the movie rights to the Ash Williams character, wasn't in a rush to license his baby if Ash wasn't going to win the fight against the monsters a compromise that New Line Cinema executives were simply not willing to make. When reminiscing about the whole ordeal, Bruce Campbell told a room full of nerds that, You think Freddy, after they made 98 of those stupid movies, they're gonna let it all end right there with Ash taking his head off? You think Paramount's gonna let the whole Jason series die because I cut his head off? They won't let that happen, so there's no reason for me to be in it unless I can kill both those losers. The final nail in the coffin came after the Raimi-produced The Grudge opened a huge numbers in 2004, and the filmmaker decided to use the momentum of his production company's success to announce a remake for The Evil Dead, one that was very much unlike the version we eventually got and would have featured his beloved Ash. As for the original 17-page treatment of the proposed horror crossover, it was later fleshed out and adapted into a six-issue comic book series where we finally got to see Ash get the last laugh over his iconic counterparts. And as for Freddy and Jason, well, they moved on from their cinematic crossover ambitions and proceeded to reboot their franchises where they scared off any self-respecting horror fans straight out of their seats. Hey guys, hope you liked that episode. You know, as a huge horror fan, I remember seeing Freddy vs. Jason when it came out in theaters, and it was a big deal for me. I was waiting for a sequel, but it never came, but I would have loved to see Pinhead or Michael or anyone face off against them. So who would you have liked to see in a hypothetical sequel to this movie? Let us know in the comments below, and also make sure you subscribe to this channel for more episodes of this series. And if you like what I'm doing, follow me on Twitter at James A. Janice, or my channel on YouTube at Practical Folks.